Uh, so I want to talk uh, with regards to people entering this this particular space, because, again, I feel like we threw a lot at people and especially if you're, uh, you know, a newcomer and so forth for students and people trying to get into uh, the software developer space and especially the security aspects of the job uh, or just uh, being a developer that has a little bit of security in their in their toolbox. Can you talk about some skills or experiences or projects or other indicators of competence that they should be doing and listing on their resume uh, to help them stand out? Yeah, definitely. I think that one of the major drawbacks of uh, most of the programming course that I know is that they're not dealing with security. They tell you how to write, uh, you know, high, uh, code that is uh, clean, you know, with yeah. good IG that can support scale uh, with good uh, design, but they're not really touching security. And so, for example, uh, for any student that wants to, you know, have a first uh, encounter with security, I would really encourage him to uh, take a look at the OWASP top 10, which yes. is, you know, the most common risks uh, that you can uh, encounter when you're uh, dealing with code. Yeah. And so that that's one thing. And the other is basically getting familiar with the basic uh, tool for uh, code scanning, like, you know, static uh, SAS, you know, SCA, dependency check, and, and secret detection. Uh, that would be my, my advice, how to kind of stand out, uh, because most of the, uh, of the people that are applying for a job, usually they're listing, you know, the, the, the frameworks, or the language that they know, but very few are actually uh, um, showing that they know how to write secure code. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and one one of our our twelve sort of uh, career paths is is secure coder, and and we're always encouraging people, even not who who don't want to sort of lean right into that, to still have that that knowledge in their back pocket. I mean, there's so many other applications for it. So, um, yeah. I mean, do you think because you were saying that there is there is kind of that divide between like developers and we say, oh, well, developers don't need to know security stuff or they don't know security stuff. And so we need to sort of like have this support thing. Do you think there's a benefit to having developers have at least a little bit of security knowledge and then vice versa, uh, SecOps people having more than a little bit of like uh, developer knowledge so that there's there's more of a, a give and take there? Yeah, definitely. I think that, first of all, um, any company that has kind of evolved from, you know, very immature in terms of security to a little bit mature or doing some compliance uh, process needs to go through some security training. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, of course, it helps. If you have some some basic background in security when you're a developer, you're, it's definitely helping uh, write secure code from, from, uh, from the start and not having to deal with that uh, afterwards. I think that um, if there, uh, if you have some great tool in your environment, they can definitely help you uh, with, uh, you know, getting the knowledge that you need. Um, every time you're uh, getting uh, some vulnerability, you need to understand why uh, it's a vulnerability and, you know, you can learn on, on the way. Uh, but definitely starting with some basic baseline, it helps. Have you seen WorkBytes, the new security awareness training series from InfoSec? Our team produced this series with three E's in mind, making security awareness training entertaining, engaging, and educational. Just go to infosecinstitute.com slash free to learn more about this hilarious office comedy. And hey, let us know what you think about it.